Welcome to a, another uh, Renault and Dacia How It's Done. Guys, 90%, over 90% of you are not subscribed to the channel who are watching this. So if you guys could just take a moment to click subscribe, hit the like button if you enjoy the video. It takes a second to you, but means a massive difference to the um, YouTube algorithm and allows more people to see these videos and to get advice on how things get done. So enjoy the video, thank you. So here we have the all new Sandero. This is the iron blue color. Um, I, I personally really like it and I know a lot of people do. So we've got a really nice new design to the lights, a signature Y shape that comes across. You'll notice this with the Sandero and the stepway. Clear Dacia badge on the front. And they've added some kind of more muscular lines to the bonnet as you can see here gives the uh, front end a really nice new look compared to the old model. As we come round, you'll see these wheels are actually hubcapped, but they uh, have done a design that looks like an alloy wheel. You'll see trends that look similar to the old Clio with the new Sandero in terms of its overall design. Certain things they've worked on, the handlebars don't feel quite as cheap anymore. They are sturdy. You'll notice the keyless entry icons on the door there. Again to the rear lights, the Y shape. They've got a little hidden Dacia icon with inside as well, which is subtle. Rear end, as you can see, has got a lot more shape to it. This one being the comfort spec, you have rear parking sensors on the back, which are what these little icons are, the black dots there. Filler cap always being driver's side here. And it's a release from inside, which I'll show you once we go inside the vehicle. So here we take a little look inside the vehicle. So we're around on the passenger side. As you can see, new design to the seats and headrest. You'll notice this headrest um, is, if I look over on this side, as you can see, it's a very skinny design headrest. Um, but it does not take away from comfort. You've got these stitched lines across the seat on the top and back, and then kind of a, a um, cross-section design on the back here. Some little features, so you'll notice this little hook in here. By pushing that, you've got a little um, bag hook or coat hook there. Just a simple little thing, but quite a nice feature. And we come around to the glove box in here. So you've got a little cubby in here, and then your main section at the back there. And then behind here is all your fuses, etc. Nice close to that. Feels sturdy enough. They've got these nice new designed air vents, as you can see. Again, just open and close as a standard kind of traditional. Then onto the door, you've got the same kind of netting here, electric front windows. And again, as the same with outside, the handles feel a lot sturdier. Don't feel like they'll break the first time you'll use them. And looking at the centre console, so you'll see we've got two drinks holders and then this section here, it's actually a perfect size for the key just to slot in. So as I've described in some of my other videos, you will you can pick and purchase key covers and allow these to go on your keys. But if you don't wish to do that, obviously you can keep them in your pocket, keep them in your bag. But if you have got it out, as I say, it does fit really nicely in there. You'll see 12 volt power outlet for the rear. And then we've got an armrest here, which folds down. It is driver only. Um, so if you're the passenger, tough luck, but you have got the armrest there. It feels a little bit flimsy, but does the job. Six speed gearbox. To do reverse, you'd pull the collar up along and up, and that's into your reverse. And then we have the air vents here. Uh, sorry, the air conditioning controls you with fan direction, your fan temperature and your fan speed, and then aircon on and off, cycle air, um, and quick DMS front. 
then you've got the USB port here and a 12 volt power there. And then we've got some buttons along here. So this will lock the doors. You've got your hazards and then some indicators for your passenger um, airbags, which I'll be able to um, show you shortly how to turn off. And then you've got an indication showing seat belts aren't on. This turns your um, stop start off. So when you go into neutral and take your foot off the clutch, the engine will stop. If you don't like it doing so, you can turn it off like that. Eco mode reduces acceleration, but saves you on fuel. Um, so a nice feature to have. And then this being the comfort, we have got the multimedia screen here. So we turn it on. And then as you can see, you've got your radio, your media, your phone, um, smartphone integration. In one of my other videos, I talked about the um, wireless Apple and Android. So if you haven't seen that, um, just take a look at, at my channel and you'll see that. But as you can see, really responsive touch screen. You've got all your kind of settings and controls along here. Sat nav. So overall, it's a pretty good system. I personally would still use Waze or Google Maps through the wireless phone integration. Um, and in fact, some comforts, if you're buying um, any kind of now after April build, won't have built-in sat-nav, so you would be using Apple CarPlay or wireless. But any with a built-in sat-nav, it would look like this. We click menu, and then route settings, GPS, etc. But we click destination, address, type in a postcode, and then it would start a route. Or we can go points of interest, custom search, and then in a town we could say um, London. And then I wanna look for a camping spot near London. There we are. Yeah, we'll go with that. It's so looking for the route and then that will show clearly what the route display looks like it will tell you will count you down saying like that or you can click an alternative route but we're going to go on that route and then it shows you as such if we click on that normally if you've got radio playing it would show here but obviously it's no media at the moment um and then obviously you've got your direction it will take you till half two to get there 46 miles etc Around with the driver's side, so you've got a height adjustable pump for the seat here, and another lever here which does the rear of the seat. Over, if you open the door over to the side here, you will see the controls for the passenger airbag. This is the same for Sandero and Stepway, and you can turn it off just by spinning round, all right? This will turn your parking sensors off. Around to the steering wheel, so these are the controls for cruise control and speed limiter. And you'd start it by pressing either this one or this one, and then set, and it will set the speed you're driving at. And then once you um, have set that, you can take your foot off the accelerator, it will keep you going at that speed. If you brake or accelerate, it will cut it out, and you'd press the resume to take you back to the speed you were going at. Other side, you've got voice activation for any smartphone connected. This button cycles on the dash between your options and then the arrow keys cycle through your average distance range etc there and then your dial either side of traditional rev and mile per hour automatic wipers as you can see indicated by this and then these are a raindrop sensitivity so i've got it one click down which is automatic and then smallest raindrop means the lightest rain it will come on and then you've got your rear wipers on the side here and then not equally on the other side, you've got your automatic lights, fogs front and rear in the middle. So as soon as it starts to get dark, the auto lights will come on and then um, go off in daylight. Same as if you drove through a tunnel, they'd flick on and off. The vehicles also come with an SOS button. So you can press this should you need to for emergency services, or if the car was in a sufficient crash, it would call the emergency services for you. So if you were incapacitated, you wouldn't have to worry, it would be doing it for you. Driver's door, we've got left and right wing mirror, move them around, a little joystick there, and then your window controls and um, your rear window. A feature that they have added, which um, I really like, is that 
now if you open the door while the window is going up it will still continue to close whereas on the old models it would stop you'd have to turn the eight power back on close your door and get that to go up looking at the rear seats now so it is a five seater obviously it's a hatchback so um, the overall space for that fifth seat's not massive you have isofix on the two outer seats they are currently stitched up but if you purchase the vehicle and you have children you can break that stitch really easily um, five proper seat belts all in the middle here so there's nothing from kind of a back one the middle headrest is a much smaller headrest so you can click that down it doesn't block the view so looking at the boot of the vehicle as you can see a pretty good size overall with this one we have got a spare wheel option so you'll see the jack at the side of the vehicle there nice securely stored away and we've got a tow hook on the side here you'll see the spare wheel well really nicely fitted for the wheel so there's no noise and rattling around you've got a screw here which would unscrew and then you can take the wheel out and as you can see it's a max of 50 mile per hour on the space saving spare which is pretty standard across all vehicles one thing i would note is the connector uh, is a little bit flimsy but honestly hooks off easily like that and it's something that you don't really take out very often so there's not going to be much wear onto that item 